It is time for another bullpen episode of Disclosure, the show where men get to weigh in on religion, culture, marriage, life, or just plain being a man and the subject of manliness. My name is Sean Boonstra, probably the least manly man at the table today in the bullpen, but uh, we will be discussing men's issues. I'll be your guide for the next 58 minutes or so as we discuss and debate the whole world from a male perspective. Joining me in studio today is Ben Torres. Ben, good morning to you. Good morning. How are you? I think okay. You know, morning is not my time of day. Uh, everything's too bright and loud. But other than that, <laughs> it's good to see your smiling face in well, studio. Well, it's very good to be here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I'm me. glad you're here. Yeah. You live here in uh, the Colorado area. You're down I in do. Berthoud. And uh, uh, yeah, Mead right now. Oh, you're in Mead. Yes. Okay, so you are like our junior senator today because you haven't quite yet crested the age of forty. I but have just, not. No. Just wait. Just wait. Just a baby. Yeah. Just. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just wait, man. Everything's going to fall apart. On my fortieth birthday, I went blind. I'm it looking just, forward to yeah, it. You yeah. Know. <laughs> <laughs> that may not all be accurate. <laughs> On your fortieth, I'll give you a bottle of saw palmetto. There are other things that are going to happen. I that, have no idea what that is. Well, you're going thing. to know. You yes. will know what that is after <laughs> after forty. And I'm all the men, I don't. out of all the men out there listening, you know what saw palmetto is. We'll tell you on the break. Yeah, we'll mm. tell you during the <laughs> Do break. Do I want to know? Oh yeah. Well, you <laughs> will get up less often in the night. Let me put it that oh, way. Oh okay. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Palmer Halverson. Who has crested forty? But your eyes didn't fall apart on your fortieth. No, nope, they didn't, Sean. No. You told me they wouldn't. They didn't. I know. I know. It's coming. Probably your fiftieth. No, it's gonna. I pray for it every night. It's not <laughs> oh, right, man. Lord. It's not right that Palmer can still see. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, for me, it was. You know what I do for you, right? I do graphics and design stuff. Oh, I need my eyes. All right, so I'll stop praying that you go blind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I I was my fortieth birthday like clockwork, man. It just fell mm. apart on me. I actually thought. Um, I'd been sick that 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 month when it uh, first happened. I got this blinding headache, and I called my doctor. Said, "I think I know what's wrong. It's a brain tumor." He said, "Brain tumor?" He said, "Are you over forty?" I said, "Oh yeah, I'm over 40. He said, uh, "Maybe before you panic, you should go see the eye doctor." <laughs> <laughs> and so I went to see. Oh, my eye vision's perfect. Went to the eye doctor, and uh, it turns out I was blind. I couldn't even see the pattern in the rug um, until I got my new glasses. Hmm. Alex Rodriguez, welcome back to the bullpen. Hey, it's good to be you here. You have crested 40. And, I sure uh, have. And how are your eyes? I've got my pair of glasses ready in front of me. Yeah. So I can't read a thing without, or I lost mine. Oh, no, I see Ben's got hit. Everyone, you've already got oh, your ben, glasses. I have glasses yeah. ready. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Hey, guys, our topic today is going to be the 10 things that every man should know, Ben uh, brought us that topic after surveying a bunch of guys, right? Yes, single men under 40. Okay, and mm -hmm. the 10 things every man should know. Before we get to that, though, I got to share this one. I got to share this story. I hid this from my wife on the way out the door this morning. Uh, this is, for, <laughs> oh, I can hear her laughing in the control room. Uh, when divorce was off the table, this headline read, English couples dissolved their marriages with beer. Did you know that in the 19th, <laughs> no, in the 19th century, you could sell your wife for a pint of beer in wow. England? Because oh, man. divorce was so hard to obtain. It was so illegal that the only way you could get it was for adultery. So these guys would go to the pub and trade wives and, and seal the deal with a beer. And then when your <laughs> wife left with another dude, that was considered adultery, and then you could get a legal divorce. Wow. Mm, yeah, and that's clever. all. Yeah. yeah, a pint that's of beer. That's crazy. So I don't drink beer, so I don't know what the non-alcoholic version of this would be. Is my wife still in the control room? Is she listening to is us this, produce this show? Oh, she's right there. Is this one of the 10 things every man should know? Yeah, what your wife is worth. <laughs> But what, what would be the equivalent, though? What beverage is she worth? I don't know. I go to Coco. Sprite. Fresca. Yeah, how many frescas is your wife worth? All right, that's not our topic for today. Or I'm Ma Martinelli's for the Adventists. Mar 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 how many <laughs> bottles of Martinelli's? <laughs> that stuff's so sickly sweet, I hate it. It's very sweet. Oh, no, no. I, um, I was, in a previous life, a beer drinker. I just didn't realize I could sell my wife for a beer. <laughs> for one. We missed oh, opportunity. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> We may be able to pull some values out of that that we should know. <laughs> All right, honey, I know you're out there and you can hear this entire show. I would never trade you for a beer. A pint. <laughs> a we pint. Oh, that's a right, pint, a though. Pint. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to put that story away because I might be getting a divorce for free. <laughs> <laughs> Ten things every man should know. It is time to climb up into the treehouse, pull up the ladder, hang out the sign that says, No Girls Allowed. What are the ten things every man should know? And here's what I think is going to happen. We all brought ten things, and there's four of us in the room. Mm -hmm. We're probably going to end up with the 40 things that every man should know. <laughs> but I'd be curious to see if we have any overlap. Guys, did you do your homework? 
I know you. Yes. Yes. I, see. I think uh, we're going to see some convergence. You think so? Yeah. Mm. All right. We who's going to go, who's gonna kick the ball down the field? Who's got the first thing that every man should know? Well, I brought 31. You brought 31? Yeah. You know it was 10, Alex. I, I know. I know. I just wow. I, I just couldn't get, get over the fact that there were so many things. Yeah, I've got this teenage boy. <laughs> and um, every, every time... Uh, Every time we're sitting in the car or somewhere, I, I I used to tell them, "Hey, this is the most important thing that 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 you need to know," and or this is this is the number one thing, and and after doing that about a hundred thousand times, he, he called me on that. He was like, "Well, what about last week's most important thing?" <laughs> yeah. So we we've thrown out thrown that out the window now. Now I just pick a number out of the year. It's this is you know less than ten thousand six hundred and twenty one. Right. And uh, then he sits back because he knows his dad's a preacher and can't say anything in in short sentences. So, but. But yeah, as I was thinking about this, there were so many different things that I that I wanted to tell you my son. You seriously brought thirty one? I got thirty one. I added one right before I came down. <laughs> uh, I only brought twenty seven. Well, I brought see, a whole see, bunch you're, too, you're but right I categorized there. them into major categories. All right, it sounds like you're ready to our, kick our the football the down the field, though. Okay, what do you got? So I've got three categories. I've got practical. Are you oh. I've got All the right, practical that's a preaching for you. I've, I've got the character, and I've got the. Spiritual. You know, it's the bullpen, right? You should have written this on a napkin. You have it all organized in categories. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Oh, you're disqualified from the bullpen. <laughs> <laughs> so, so here we go. Uh, on the practical side, I thought, man, what are, what are important things to know? And and I thought essential knots. Okay. Knots. How to tie a knot? Oh, like, knots. certain knots. So like if you're Boy picking, Scout stuff? If you're like picking ten knots. things that your son should know, this is absolutely. This on is one, one of the, the top. How to tie a knot? How to tie a knot? 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 Okay. So, so you you got <laughs> which knot? <laughs> well, you know the 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 um, figure eight on a bite is is like yeah. the essential knot for me. I use it. All the time, the clove hitch. The I guess I'm the, not a man. I have no idea what you just said. <laughs> you are less than manly, man. You, no, no. You need look, to grow a bigger no, beard. Yeah, well, this is about all I can do, Alex. Come on, man. But I know you could shave it off and sprout a new one this afternoon. I, I, See, I, I, I shaved this morning by the time I drove here. I I all right, but you picked a knot. <laughs> a knot. This all right. I'm telling you, here's what like I know about the knots. The essential of and life. I, if, I will affirm that I am indeed a male, but you cross the strings. You put one under the other and pull it. Oh, that's a sissy knot. All right. So, <laughs> Alex, what I will tell you is this. And I, I learned to sail when I was a kid. Did you really? Yeah. And I still tied everything with it. And you, you could have you made picked, it back to shore. States together. You yeah. could have picked yeah. a catch-all category that would have covered that. Because my, you know, I didn't, I, one of the things Only I thought the... about was a knot. But one of mine is know how to fix everyday things. So there you go. Knot could be in that category. How to fix things, how to tie things down. Oh, yeah, but. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, I thought not, the same thing about a tie. That's a knot, oh, too. I have yeah, a, tie, a tie. I have a tie, but it wasn't in my top ten. Right. Really? A, how to a tie, tie a tie? Yeah. I think it's very can, important. Can you do them all? No, I can only do a full Windsor. That's it. That's it. I can do one. Good. I can only it. do a half Windsor. No, no. Wait wait, wait a second. Wait a second. Uh, uh, like a like a necktie? Yeah. Yeah. Dude, you don't even wear a necktie. Not anymore, no. Why do you think? Because I can only do a half Windsor. <laughs> that's why he doesn't know how to tie knots. That's why he doesn't know how to tie knots. Well, okay, but why? Why? Why, Ben? I mean... I think, I mean, you live on a, on a little farm. I do. See, yeah. Yeah, see me make it a diminutive. You live yeah, on a little no, farmlet. Just a little farm. It's, <laughs> well, all, it's all you pay me. If you pay me more, I'd have a big farm. Well, if you could stay on the farm your whole life, that'd be not an issue. All right. right. I, I, okay. I, let, let's, tell me why the knot in a, in a minute or two, and then I want to hear from Ben why tying a necktie is on your, on your top ten. Yeah. For, so for me, you know, you're constantly going to Lowe's or Home Depot or or, or doing something around the house, and and it, I always find myself take, taking a rope and, and having to tie something down. And so to to make it, especially when you're traveling in the car, to make it not fall out and kill so somebody. So when you go out shopping, yeah. When I go out shopping, I, I tie a noose around my neck and try to, try to hang myself. Are you kidding? Do you tie your kids down to the car? No, I, I actually I actually love shopping. I, I sat around a, a table, a bunch of uh, law strike. enforcement guys That's years strike, ago. Strike, strike two. two. I, I, I sat around, and, and, I, and I said that. I love shopping, and this big old guy I worked out all the time. He was huge, one of my partners. He looked at me and, and, and just stared me down. He says, never say that again, man. Right. <laughs> Don't say that in public. Right. Uh, all right. So tie things. Why tie the things. necktie? Well, the necktie, and honestly, it didn't make my personal top. Oh, it's it probably, didn't. It's probably 11. Okay, it's yeah. 11. Go ahead. Right I actually down. have it on my list, too, but it's after the 10. And honestly, and I thought about this, whether or not to put it on, and I sat around at church uh, a couple of Sabbaths ago, and I looked around and I said, yeah, a lot of guys are not wearing a real clean, tight-looking tie knot. And I thought, just to look presentable, clean cut, in this day and age, you're going to have to eventually know how to look sharp, you know? And I said, that's probably important. So, I can't tie a knot and I don't wear a tie, I guess. But they weren't on your top that's ten. Two, it's not on my strikes. top ten. There's only one left. So. No, no, you have two strikes against you. You we'll love. Have, sh I heard you say you love we'll shopping. We'll both have to walk out, and then you guys yeah. got it right. Well, hey. YouTube has right. the answer. Don't worry. 
you know, really? You, you, oh yeah. You learn to tie a tie on YouTube. You now? can. What happened though? Like my dad. Bow tie. My dad. Yeah. I'm pretty sure my dad taught me how to tie the tie, hmm. and I practiced in front of the mirror, and and I could probably still do it in my sleep, but I don't know the full Windsor, and I don't know that one where you do the little arrow that points kind of. Oh, through. as long as you get that nice little dimple, you know. I can't get the dimple. It's hard. Mm. Why do you think I never wear one? I just don't wear a tie well, anymore. I don't know how to do a full Windsor either. So. I miss leather ties. I'll say that. Oh. Leather okay. ties? Oh, you're not old enough for the leather tie. <laughs> Early 80s, leather tie. A lot of the leather ties were zipper ties. Pop collar. <laughs> yeah, there was a zipper inside of one of my ties. You're laughing at my... Okay, you're laughing at my tie. All right, somebody kick the... F- give me another one. Okay, I'm, I've got... Tie. That was a practical one, okay. right? Yeah, so, that was practical. So I've, yeah. I've got... Yeah. Um, you know, I have a whole... Well... You were complaining about Alex and his categories. I've got a bunch of categories, but um, one uh, one for me is career is a category, but the top item there is know how to provide for yourself and or for your family. Ooh. Hmm. Expound on it. That's general, yeah. <clears throat> so, yeah, it's general, but, I mean, there's a lot of things that could go into there. So how, how to have a good work ethic, hmm. know what talents yep. and gifts God has given you. Um, let's talk about, you know, how to manage your time, how to manage money. Yeah. Um, those are all in that major category of how to provide for yourself and your family. I had that one as number two, Pullman. How to take responsibility for yourself and work. <clears throat> well, I, so in, yeah, in the character category, I number one, how to be responsible and trustworthy. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've got that one too. Let's let's talk about working a little bit. I had I actually I found a Bible verse on this. Well, there's lots in there about mm-hmm. about. Um, what is it? First Timothy five verse eight. If anyone does not provide for his own, especially for those of his household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. Mm. That's pretty harsh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's yeah. like really, I won't go to work, and you're worse than an unbeliever. And I've often wondered why would Paul equate unbelief to not providing for your family? Why? And um, and it occurs to me that um, that you're not trusting God at that point. If like mm. your family is relying on you, you're supposed to, in that relationship, mirror Christ's relationship to the church. And if you won't provide for your family, you're denying the faith. You're you're not mirroring what you were intended to mirror. Um, do you think there's a problem with work ethic in young men now? Absolutely. I think it's just a growing problem. <clears throat> and I think that potentially some of the career choices that people are picking are just not fitting the the market. Yeah, no, I, 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 um, you can write your complaint letters to Palmer Halverson, Box Nine Nine Nine, Loveland, Colorado. <laughs> Send but, them in. But I've discovered that um, there's an entire generation coming up now in their twenties where, when they show up at work, they're wanting to know where's my corner office. That's right. Mm-hmm. And and it's like, wait a minute, your corner office? No, 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 no. You're going to be loading this truck over here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I have a degree. Yeah, we all have degrees. And our first day of work, I hear the music. Somebody's trying to, the, the, the oh, it's not a millennial who's trying to shut me out of this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> We're just going to start the music on top of him. You're listening to The Bullpen. We are talking about the 10 things that every man should know. And so far, we've covered knots and work. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and, uh, and apparently, I'm not a man because I don't wear a tie and I can't tie a knot even though I took sailing. We're going to take a little break, and uh, and we want you to listen to these offers from the good people at The Voice of Prophecy. This is mind-blowing stuff that will deepen your relationship with God, your understanding of the Bible, and I'll be right back after this. Are you searching for answers to life's toughest questions like, where is God when we suffer? Can I find real happiness? Or is there any hope for our chaotic world? The Discover Bible Guides will help you find the answers you're looking for. Visit us at BibleStudies.com or give us a call at 888-456-7933 for your free Discover Bible Guides. Study online on our secure website or have the free guides mailed right to your home. There is never a cost or obligation. The Discover Bible Guides are our free gift to you. Find answers in guides like, Does My Life Really Matter to God? and A Second Chance at Life. You'll find answers to the things that matter most to you in each of the 26 Discover Bible Guides. Visit BibleStudies.com and begin your journey today to discover answers to life's deepest questions.
We are back from the break, and during the break, it became really obvious to me that there is no way, there is no way we're going to get through everybody's list today. We've conquered one item from three lists at this point, and uh, we are one quarter of the way through the show. We are in the second quarter on our way to the halftime break, and we were talking about work uh, right before the break. Let's define what a good work ethic. Ah. Ethic. Ethic. Yeah. I can't tie knots and I can't pronounce the English language. All right, but you know, done. well, my original, my mother tongue is Canadian English, and it's radically different than this this abomination you speak down here <laughs> south of the forty nine. But how do you how do you say ethic in in Canadian speak then? Shh, Palmer, <laughs> don't blow it. You're also Canadian. You speak. You also speak the Queen's English. Um, work ethic. What is a work ethic for a dude? What is a biblical work ethic oh, for biblical. a man? Hmm. Oh well, no, or or a godly, or or a, a fit one, or yeah. What is a work ethic? I think willing to do what it what it takes without without complaining, uh, knowing that uh, just the, the sheer satisfaction that you're that you're working, you're you're providing, uh, you're earning. And my my son this uh, this summer, this past summer, he's too young to really do a whole lot out there. So we we got him some some yard work, and he showed up at a That's house a and fine start. It's a life. fine start, man. He was pulling weeds, and so every Friday he'd pull weeds for two hours. Um, started when he was fourteen. And the, the lady there at the house says, man, y- your son works better. He, he, he works faster. He, he does a better job of pulling weeds than, than many of the older kids that come up over here and, and, and do the same thing. And, and well, I, that must make you a little bit proud, though. Yeah. Your, your yeah. son knows how to work. You know, right before he, we drive in there, I tell him he, he better work hard or, or <laughs> I'm going to work him over. But <laughs> no, it, it's, it's nice to know that, uh, that, that you're willing to, to do it, and, and it doesn't matter how, how difficult it is. Th- does he like it? No. Well, it's, that's it's, why you get paid to work. Yeah. If everybody loved it, you wouldn't get a paycheck. I think work ethic, you know, for me, I would describe it, you know, showing up on time or before, uh, staying focused Amen on the on task. Amen on showing up before. Yeah. And <laughs> I'm, I'm always there an hour before. I was here at 6.30 in the morning uh, whenever there's a show on. I I'm, think, yeah, I think the call time for me this morning was 7.45, and I was here at 7, almost 7.46. But, I mean, <laughs> showing up on time or before, staying focused on the tasks you're asked to do, um, yeah, being a problem solver, yeah. and respecting anybody who's supposed to be leading you. What do you guys think of the complaint that, uh, I mean, what I hear a lot of now is a, avoid workaholism. You know, men work themselves to death. Don't be more committed yeah. to your work than your job. And in my frame of reference, my job is my commitment to my family. It's it's how I'm providing for them. I don't see a distinction between the two um, that, that working is providing. Well, from... From one workaholic to another, yeah, um, yeah, I, it, uh, it, it's it's empowering. It, um, it it's there's a lot of meaning to, to life just just through the through the ability to get out there and work and provide. Uh, and that's not to say that uh, that we don't need to spend time with our families. I think that's important as well. And and that's something that that men should know how to how to actually you know divide their time. But but there's uh, there's there's an amazing strength that comes through through providing and through and through working hard on a daily basis and i'm much better going out and working than i am at discussing feelings oh absolutely <laughs> i think th- i think that there's i think there's some gray areas there and i think that you know certain families and situations yeah. might be different i would say that probably you know in the younger years if you have a family that maybe there's maybe a little bit more time might be required in the home i'm not sure but did then, you do diapers uh not as much as i should have but i did yeah yeah um me either. <laughs> <laughs> ben, you say you've got some that you think we might not have on our lists. Well, I have two that were kind of uh, work-related. And one, as Palmer touched touched upon, I said uh, learning a trade that can kind of get you through maybe an in-between time of your career. Right. Something that will pay the bills that that's right. you can have good work ethic in. Oh, that's a good Construction, one. mechanical, uh Cars, computers nowadays, right? Uh, culinary skills. These are all trades. That do you I think cook? I do. No That's way. That's on my list, by the way. How to cook. Every man should know how to cook. So what, That's right. What a lot you, of good reasons for that. What have you backstopped your life with? What are some of the things? that? Because uh, that's what I hear you saying is that yeah. um, you got to have a backstop. So I know... I know I paid my way through college building houses. Right. I still know how to swing a hammer. Mm-hmm. Do I like it better indoors than 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 I like swinging a hammer in January outside? Yeah, but I know how to do it. What right. have you backstopped your life with? Uh, well, for me, it is basically culinary skills. Wow. And also any type of manual construction trade work. 
Yeah. And uh, I think those two things build excellent work ethic, yeah, especially right. in cold weather climates <laughs> or even hot weather climates <laughs> yeah. in the summer. Working outside will give you good work ethic. I don't know. What is this? This wouldn't be a cold weather climate here in Colorado. Moderate. Moderate. Yeah, the Canadians are writing us. <laughs> it's like, like 12 or 13 degrees, dude. That's that's like the polar north. Go outside. No, you have yeah. not been to the polar north. Like, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm Puerto Rican, dude. This is cold. <laughs> no, come on, man. Really, 12 degrees? What is that in real degrees, Palmer? I 12 is like... Um. 12 is like degrees. minus Listen, 10. Yes. I don't know. You uh, should you should like, see the photo of this jacket that I sent uh, oh, it was our friend here that he should buy. It I've already like ordered this. it. <laughs> are you are you from a you're from are you from I warm weather? I grew up in Southern California. Oh, oh that's what I'm talking. Yeah, that's about. like yeah. 12, so 12 degrees. This is cold weather climate. Well, it took me about eight months to get used to uh, the cold weather here. I moved in January, so 12 degrees. Yeah. We used to put on our light spring coat for that. Yeah. I actually, this is all I wore out in 12 degrees this morning. Well, I wear shorts now when I shovel snow, so. Isn't that great? Yeah. That's the best. All yeah. right, who's got something else? Kick it down the field. You've got, oh, but hey, wait a minute. What do you like to cook? Just because you might be sticking around for supper tonight. I'm oh. <laughs> <laughs> what do you like to cook? What do you like to eat, I should ask then. Really? Yeah. Are you that, mm. You're that broad? Uh, I I'd like I'd like to think I am. Do you do Thai food? Oh, I really personally don't like oh, Thai I food. I landed right I on love, the one you I don't I love know. Asian food, though, so I, I could I – could, uh, I'm learning to like Thai food. My family likes Thai food, and oh. they, they right, like to take me out there. I like my weather cold and my food hot. Yeah. yeah. That's how I like it. 12 degrees, really, you big baby. That's just – I'm just still bothering me over here well, that you – That's cold. That is not cold. Oh, You're talking cold. to a Puerto Rican. You don't yeah, even have to plug cold. your car in at 12 degrees. No, but it's cold. Have you ever you lived anywhere where in. you... Oh, forget the car. Have you ever been anywhere where you actually had to plug in your car? Yeah. Where? Indiana. They plug cars in in Indiana? It's not cold no. enough there. No, I had to plug my truck out of diesel. Oh, yeah. So I had to plug it in. Uh, yeah, nice try. <laughs> All right. <laughs> right. You so, a lot of that's grumbling, strike, grumbling going no, that's on. Strike, no, that's strike three right there. <laughs> All right, I'm he gone. He loves shopping. He <laughs> can't handle a little strike bit of cold. Three. Do you have seat warmers in your car? Yes. Oh. <laughs> it's quite nice. You uh, hit the little the little button. It warms your 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 bum and your and your back. Oh dude, this is righteousness. <laughs> righteousness. Alex's tushy is cold and he loves shopping. All right, that's your last week on the book. <laughs> he may not be back after the break, folks. What else I, have you I did <laughs> so put got... I did put basic housekeeping here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just right in line with Oh, you. okay. So a lot oh, really? so Why? sewing and cooking and laundry and, and all these things and, and even changing diapers. Yeah, yeah I, I did I did I, a lot that. I I did wet diapers. Wet diapers. I didn't do full diapers. I had an agreement. Dude, I walked in one day. My 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 wife told me not to not to let the baby in the in the crib with the diaper on, only with the diaper on. And I thought, oh, what what could what could ever happen? <laughs> and, and so I I did that. I thought it was so so cute. It was with Chase, and I came back and let's just say he painted the walls and everything. Else. <laughs> oh just, man! And it was a, a nice. Hey, uh, all right. Oh, that's my right. good. Earth tone. Is good. Earth tone paint. Is this the kind of thing that all men right. talk about in their treehouse? <laughs> oh, <it is>. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank that, you for the that, focus. That that that's just. I had to erase one of the X's there, so I can I can be back all on right. the show now. Oh no! I've, I, okay. Yeah. I've got that another. Makes uh, up, uh, I've got another. Okay, Go ahead. Go ahead. So this me. is a major category. How to build and maintain quality relationships with people. So this is relational, social, people skills. How to build and maintain quality relationships and some of the sub items, how to love, cherish, and honor your wife and children. Know the value of mentors in your life. Know how to listen and know how to diffuse con conflict. Ooh. Ooh. So Ooh. That's a lot. That, that's a lot there. Yeah. Let's pick that apart. We're never going to get through all of our points here. Well, the, the number one was how to build and maintain quality relationships. Yeah. So that would not be, though, watching rom-coms with your wife. Uh, oh, oh, hesitant. My, my family laughs because they all think I love a rom-com. Really? Yeah. Well, I mean, um, you're, you're, and if, I, you and want I might. A, if you want a quality <laughs> relationship with your wife, you're going to have to do things that feed her soul. Yeah, Absolutely. Keep going. No, no, unpack that for me a yeah. little bit. Yeah. Um, well, I think if you want to have a quality relationship with your wife, you need to get to know her. You need to know what she likes. And, yeah, there are times, I'm guessing, where you'd love for her to go out and, you know, go into the mountains with you hiking or wherever you like to do. But I think you flip it upside yeah. down, and there's maybe some things that you need to do that are going to feed her soul that might push you in her direction. Do you guys feel – I mean, I just – just I'm going to throw a counterpoint on the table here, but do you feel like society, though, has – 
pushed us hard, 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 saying, man, you need to learn to relate to women, but there hasn't been a whole lot of... I'm not talking now about us. I'm not talking about your families, just society at large. There's been this push. You need to identify with women and sympathize and, and learn their side of the equation, but there hasn't been a lot of push the other way. Absolutely. Well, there's been a lot of female action figures, so... Really? <laughs> Wonder Woman, we have a lot of the... The uh, Marvel yeah. Comics stuff has yeah, a lot yeah, of yeah. female action heroes. Well, I'm good with that. Oh, maybe that's how they can relate to us. I liked Wonder Woman when it came out in the 70s, I suppose. But um, but I don't know. I find that, that we, especially in the 80s, now I'm dating myself, but let's go back to leather tie, you know, the leather tie <laughs> era. And we were told, get in touch with your feminine side and learn to identify with women and empathize and sympathize. And I didn't see much of that going the other way. And so men were told, being told to feminize in order to deepen their relationships, but I didn't see much push the other direction. Am I wrong? No, I, I think I think there's something to that. Something to that. I, I I don't know. I I I've tried to to understand women, but they're uh, <laughs> they're hard. Man. They're just, they're just it's just difficult. <laughs> well, every guy started smirking when you said so, I've tried to understand women. I'm, everybody in the room, you can't. It's radio. You couldn't see it, but, but for everybody a, laughed. I mean, personally, as a single man right now, I don't know if I care too much. If they understand me, honestly, that's not really high on my priority list. Maybe vice versa. Yes, I would like to care more about what she's thinking sure. than the opposite. And I think that's maybe more of a guy thing. And, you know, what do you think about that? Well, you're single and we, we, we got we got <laughs> something together, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, no, I, that, keep going, Ben. You see what I'm saying? Well, unpack that a little bit more. Just like, because I... Uh, because what I hear Palmer I saying agree with you. falls under an umbrella of don't be selfish. Kind of, right? Um, Could be, yeah, definitely. But I think if you want umbrella, quality right? relationships, right. it can't go one way. Exactly, because you're not always thinking yeah. about yourself, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. No. I, I do agree, though. There, there's there's this big push for, for the men to do this and the men to do that, and, and, and the man is all evil and the man doesn't understand this, and, and we, we need to come in, in full circle with with understanding, uh, you know, the, the female or, or whatever, the society. And I and I think it's it it is imbalanced a, a bit. We we always seem to be be getting the, the the brunt of 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 the bad guy type thing. Do I dare bring up the Gillette commercial? Yeah, go did ahead. you see the Gillette no. commercial? Oh man, I saw that. Uh, did you see the rebuttal to that? There was an, there was a, there was a guy that uh, made a rebuttal commercial to that. Yeah, it wasn't horrible. I guess our topic today isn't toxic masculinity. It wasn't horrible. I mean, it was fathers stopping fights and that kind of thing and. Um, but that really rubbed a lot of guys for the wrong way I, because I, I think in line with what Alex has just said, we were being told yet again, you're the biggest problem in the world. Mm -hmm. Guys mm -hmm. are the biggest problem in the world. And that, um, well, I think we're going to touch on some of that. I, I know I've peeked at some of your lists over your shoulders oh, yeah. because, you know, we have we have a, a much narrower set of emotional responses than women do. Mm. <laughs> I think we do anyway. I hear the music again. Our topic is the 10 things that every man should know. I think we've hit three of them between <laughs> four. We might need a second show. I got, are you guys willing to stick around and do another show? Let's do it. Yeah, let's yeah. do another one. Um, we're going to take a little break. I want you to take advantage of these amazing offers from the good folks at The Voice of Pro Prophecy. We run the world's biggest Bible school. We have an astonishing array of study resources for you. You want to visit voiceofprophecy.com and take advantage of this offer we're about to present. You're listening to a bullpen episode of Disclosure. We'll be right back after this. Disclosure is just one of the programs brought to you by The Voice of Prophecy, like the audio adventure program, Discovery Mountain. Discovery Mountain is a weekly Bible-based program for kids of all ages and backgrounds. Your family will enjoy faith-building stories with Jake Donovan, <laughs> Mr. Simon, and others in this small mountain town. Each summer, campers visit Discovery Mountain, where they sing songs, learn about God, and reenact a Bible story with the help of drama teachers, Miss Wendy and Miss Tamara. With 24 full episodes every year and programming every week, your family will have something uplifting to listen to every week. Listen to episodes on demand and watch video features from director Doug at discoverymountain.com or on your favorite podcast platform. That's discoverymountain.com. Hi, 
I see Harim pointing at me. It means that we are back on the air, and I've got to say that uh, the guys in the room are far more honest when they know we're in a break. <laughs> the stuff that comes out of their mouths, Uh-oh. yeah, is it's, it's so much more honest. So I would like to hit the rewind button and go back to some of the things that y'all were saying during the break because I think they were accurate. Palmer, you were talking about the fact that when you go into a bookstore and look at uh, the assortment of books on relationship, well, what were you saying? I was just saying that probably it seems like there's 10 to 20 books on how to understand uh you know, kind of the female relational side of things and maybe one or two or smaller sections, certainly, on how to understand a man. And you, you of course, had a quick remark after that. Well, we're just not that. We're just not that hard to understand. Sure. Guys are not that hard. Oh, you're laughing, Ben, but am I wrong? No. I, I'm, it's a laughter of agreement. Yeah. Yeah. We, and, they, and they are complicated. That's why they need 20 books. Yeah. Well, they are complicated. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I've been married 25 years, and I've, I've got the most to lose of everyone in the room right now because my wife's on the other side of the glass. <laughs> I still am working on it. <laughs> I'm still working on Oh, I can see her. I just got a look, and she's headed this way. I'm still working on understanding you, babe. That's what I'm saying. Um, and uh, she gave me a thumbs up on that because at least I'm working on it, right? Yeah. Uh, so at she's least saying, I'm working good on it. She's saying wait to get <laughs> home. Is what you know, you were, you were talking about that commercial, and my comment is that <clears> – <throat> When you operate from a place of feeling empowered and, and, and happy, you're going to be operating in a better place. And so I think there's been some recent sentiment that men need to grow up and men need to change and men need to be different. My perspective is, man, if we see men doing the right things, we'll aspire to do that. And I think maybe that's one of the things that touched me in that commercial. Mm. That no, the Gillette if, commercial. If, yeah, if we're, if we're given positive examples and we see men that are really achieving positive things, we want to rise to that. So did that commercial rub your fur the wrong way? It did. There's parts of it I think were good, but it, but parts of it, yeah, were rubbing me the did wrong way. Did you see it? Ben? I don't know what you guys oh, are talking oh, about. Oh no, this one, yeah. this one, this one, this one. Again, people were destroying their Gillette razors because they were telling men they should be less toxic. There was nothing wrong in 99 percent of the commercial. Sure, it was the implication that men are a problem that I think mm. bothered. Generally, yeah, yeah, in a general category. Yeah. All right. What else have you you got? A few on your list. I see I, you're I have, you're crossing your list off, Ben. Uh, yeah, as we go along, that we don't repeat here. But I have a couple around motor vehicles operation and things like that. But I th I think one that is at the very top around an automobile is knowing how to back up a trailer properly. Oh, Every dude, guy here. needs to know <laughs> yeah. how to yeah. back yeah. up a trailer. Really? Tow trailer. You gotta you gotta know how to tow a exactly. trailer, man. Well, I back have to up back is, it up, tow exactly, it, and everything. Exactly, yeah. Right. I have to hang my head in shame. Uh oh. Given a choice oh, between dude, renting just... a U-Haul trailer and renting a, a cube van, I'll go with the cube van every time. Sean, so I don't have to back the trailer up. All right. So that is like look, the fourth no, or fifth X on you, man. No, no, that's the first yeah, X. No, no, Who's gonna no, have no, to no, remind you? No, no, no. You don't know how to tie a knot. Yeah, that was one. Yeah, I mean that's essential, dude. Like, all right, who, all right. who doesn't got, know how okay, to I've got two strikes. Two but strikes you still have Sean. three because you no, actually, you erased one. The fact that, I, I made it up. Yeah, but you love shopping was worth three points. So you only. <laughs> so I have a I have a question, Alex. I have a question. This is kind of humorous. I was thinking about it during the break. How many items are on your list? Thirty-one. Thirty-one. What are you trying to do? Like the Proverbs thirty-one man? Hey, this is this is just perfection here. Okay. Is all it right. a competition though? You ask guys for ten things and they all come <laughs> in. I brought twenty-seven. I have a whole gotcha. list, but it's gotcha. hard to but, narrow but, it down. Like, what are the ten critical critical he, life? He, oh, he's yours got is pages, categorized dude. too. Sure. Yours is on a spreadsheet. He's a creative. Yeah, it's not guy. a spreadsheet. You have two pages worth too. No, the the second one is like a <laughs> classic list that every you know people talk right, here's, about. Here's one. Um, well, no, back up a trailer. I'm still though. trying to get to her. Oh, Are get you pretty over. good at that? Who did back up a trailer? Yeah, yeah this yeah, one. Yeah. No, that's yeah. right. That's right. And you guys both had that one. I had trailer, yeah. It takes practice, but yeah. It needs to, you need to learn how to do it as a guy. I, okay. I, I will You go to you go to the lake, you back up a jet ski. You go uh moving, like I, you said, you I back don't up. have a jet ski. What? <laughs> <laughs> okay, motorcycle. That's uh, another thing on my list. Know uh, how to ride a motorcycle. I do know how to do that. Oh, oh man, I didn't, I didn't put that on my list. That's oh, stick important. shift? Yeah. Stick shift. I have that one. Is that's oh, 30 30 six. Six. oh, that's Absolutely. 33. You didn't oh, think about no, that No, I didn't think about that. Man. Okay, but the trailer thing. Yeah. Somebody sit you down and teach you that, or did you, are you self -taught? Oh, that's a school of hard knocks there. Oh, really? Yeah. You've hit a few things with a trailer? Uh, I'd like to plead the fifth on that. <laughs> <laughs> Do it do it by yourself so you don't feel so embarrassed when you're learning, I guess. Well, how hard can it be? You just it's it goes the opposite it's of intuition. It's not hard at all. You got you to go try it. Okay, I'm going to back yeah. up a trailer into your shop. <laughs> do it one-handed too. I'm coming over that's tonight. How you do it. Oh, I can do it. I know I can do it. I'll tell you what. In I a find manual? It. What's that? Do it in a manual too. Oh, I can do it in a manual. <laughs> 
Oh, well, I might. I wonder if I would. That'd be humiliating if I stalled the vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who, st- who still has a man? You know that they say that 20% of um, millennials, only 20% of millennials, or was it 18%, can drive stick. Yeah, that's I believe pitiful. it. Yeah, that's like a security device. If you don't want your car yeah. stolen, just have a well, stick. Who had drive stick on their list? I think, I, I, think I did for sure. Why? Not in my top ten. But, no, they they barely make them. Now that you get to Europe and you rent a car, you're going to have to drive stick because you you're going to pay double if you want an automatic. But the end of the world comes and you need to run away, and there's only a manual car to run away in. <laughs> <laughs> you need to know how to run. That's drive a good a reason. <laughs> <laughs> All right, when the time of trouble hits, exactly. Only those who can drive. You need to be able to drive. <laughs> <a stick. laughs> drive a stick into All right, the heavenly guys. kingdom. What else have you guys? All right. Got? How about uh, how about learn to uh, learn when to be quiet? Mm. Oh, is that really a guy thing though? No, I think it's 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 in everything. But I think for guys, uh, we 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 sometimes tend to 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 just want to put our opinion out there. We we we've got to we've, we've got to say it. Yeah. I, I express that in another way. I mean, I think I think some guys are generally quiet. Some aren't. I think maybe it's personality thing. But for me, my my similarity was know how to listen. Yeah. Yeah. Is yeah. that uh, with your wife at the end of that statement? With your wife. <laughs> <laughs> with I think if you want right, quality many... relationships and learn from no, people, I, you I, need to I learn listen how to, to listen. I listen to my wife. The problem is... <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I'm just, 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 just going to take that clip and email that to your wife. But. Well, you know, your wife will come to you and, and, and they'll say something like, you know, all right, Palmer, if you came to me and you said, I've got this problem, we'll sit down, we'll talk about the problem, sure. and we'll think about some solutions, and then we, we got it. We got this. My wife comes and she's got a problem, and, and I listen to her, and then I, I share the solutions, and then she starts crying. <laughs> this, she doesn't want solutions. This is messed up. This is really. Ma- this is why it takes twenty. Now something. This books. is why you need no, twenty books on how exactly. to yeah. look through the glass, Alex. Now my <laughs> wife is shaking her head. You're so dead when you get home tonight. Uh, You're you a know dead what? man. Actually, one of the traits of listening well is knowing when not to provide solutions. Mm. But why? I guess we need a why need ask a, Palmer. Wisdom. Why ask? We need a chick panel in here. That's you, what you we You can need. provide solutions allowed? in so the that, next conversation, but but in that one, maybe sometimes you just need to listen. We need a. Is that wrong saying chick panel? Is that out? No, I think we need to do that. I think we need to get panel. some responses. I'm not offended. I, no. I'm not offended at all. No. Gene, are you offended by the chick panel? Oh, she's she's coming to the control room now. Now I'm dead, man. <laughs> um, we need a chick panel. I'll let them respond. Hey, oh yeah, come on, speak in, to us. Uh, come on in and 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 respond to Alex. <laughs> Go ahead. She's pushing the buttons. Um, the chick panel. I I don't know if I want to respond to that. Maybe you could give a different <laughs> a different name. But um, I was laughing because what Alex says is is so true though. Because I, I was watching you, Sean, laugh because you guys do want to offer solutions and and sometimes that's what we need. But most of the time, Palmer is a hundred percent right. We just need you to listen to us and to know that you're listening the... to us and that you care. Okay, that's way what, too much. What's was... the point? What's the point what's of just the... listening? <laughs> What's the point of? All right, it's it's time to. All right, you're going to be in trouble when you do. Yeah, I know. <laughs> can I move into you guys? But we're problem <laughs> solvers. This is, exactly this is who we are. Exactly. And, and, and if you're going to bring us an issue, then then we've got to solve it. No, yeah. that's right. We're, I mean, you feel less than a man if you if you don't solve it. That's where so, learning so to be Alex, quiet comes into play. My yeah. suggestion is try fifty percent of the time to not try and immediately solve the problem. See what happens. Read more books is what you're telling me, Palmer. Mm. <laughs> you you're winning my wife's approval right now. She's giving you high marks, but none of the men in the room are giving you high marks. Would you just stop it now? Just Well sh- here's what I'm gonna tell no, you. I don't because... do I don't do this well myself. Okay. So I'm I'm, right. I'm preaching this. I don't do it well myself. All See right. Palmer's gonna take this to Debbie and, and show how sensitive he is. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is what this is all about. You're getting a big thumbs down from everybody in the control room, Palmer. It's uh, like stop it. But you don't Stop have any it. strikes on your paper against me you yet. You just got one. Oh, okay. <laughs> you just got one. You know, there, there's a comedian that said one time when he listens to his wife, all you got to say is a few words. Mm-hmm. You don't say, get out of town. Oh. <laughs> I just say that all, over and over again. <laughs> but now, I won't say but the comedian, now you've, but... You've blown that for all of us by saying that on the air. Now oh. we can't use those. So, Sean, all right, my edit. number one, my number one in this top ten, because I was thinking about critical things. Number one... Know how to maintain a quality, growing relationship with God, number one. That's my number mm. one. That's my number one. And along with that, know how to share and or defend your faith, how to give a Bible study, how to be a spiritual Ooh. leader in your home. There's a That's whole good. bunch in there. I heard defend. Yep. Very manly. Very man. It's, it's a real man trait. Um, but knowing God. I put that as my number one mm-hmm. here 
because all men seek glory, fame, infamy. You want to leave your name on something. A lot of men want to leave their name on a, on a building. They want to leave their name on a street. They want to leave their name in a history book. They want to defeat something, conquer something. One of my favorite passages is Jeremiah 9. Thus says the Lord, verse 23, Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Let not the mighty man glory in his might. That's a hard one for guys. Do not glory in your might. It's like, well, but I want to mm-hmm. conquer something, and I want everybody to know that I did it. Nor let the rich man glory in his riches. That's mm. a tough one, too, yeah. because we tend to define ourselves by what we've accomplished and what we've acquired. Right. That's right. what guys do. Right. Yeah. Because you're a provider. Mm-hmm. And here's Jeremiah saying, leave that behind. That's not a man's true glory. And this is the part that gets me. Let him who glories glory in this, that he understands and knows me that I am the Lord, exercising loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth, for in these I delight. What's a man's true glory? According to the scriptures, a man's true glory is to understand the character of God and to, to I mean. mirror that in his life. Um, but what I, you know, and, and that's a hard one for a guy to read. It's, it's easy to pay lip service to that, but really, we're not going to glory in our might, our wisdom, or our riches. Those are weak points for guys. They really are. Yeah. We define ourselves by what, what's the first thing everybody asks you in a, in a social gathering if they've just met you for the first time? What do you do? What do you do? Sure. What do you do? Mm-hmm. And uh, and what what are we doing when we go out into the parking lot? What do they drive? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. yeah, that takes a lot of the cards yeah. away. It does. Yeah. Um, that real glory. And at the end of the at the end of your life, which one still lasts? Which one goes with you into your casket? The rest of them don't. Your might is gone. You, if That's if right. you live long enough, your might disappears. You 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 go out the way you came in. Um, in a crib in your diaper again like That's right. That's you know, no right. teeth no hair it all goes away but if you have the character of god reproduced in your mm-hmm. life um that 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 blows my mind you take your character yeah. with you yeah amen but that's not an easy pill to swallow is it i no. mean i don't no. know i i still struggle with that because i find myself almost every week having to go back to this text and say okay Sean, that's not your priority. Your priority isn't whether or not you put your name on something. Your priority is whether or not the name of God has been written in your heart. Right. And Paul talks about that, not, not being able to boast on anything else. Mm-hmm. But the fact that, uh, that the Lord has done everything for us. We've got, we've got nothing to bring to the table. No. Yeah. Well, it got quiet. It's like we pulled the trigger. We got very well, serious. Well, no, yes. but the, yeah, but the number one. I mean, that was top of my list. How many of you had knowing God on your list? Just well, out of I, curiosity. Did, I didn't actually order my, my mine was how to pray. Um, to be a, a, a to be a praying man, and a spiritual yeah. leader were were the were the big things on on my list here. Wow! I was trying to choose categories and words that really made it a big picture. So you know, maintain a quality, growing relationship with God would include a whole bunch of things. Right. I, I want to come back to that concept of defending because mm-hmm. men do need something to fight for. Now that I've said, uh, oh, oh, look at that! You got a bunch of stuff there. You're so categorized. But you should have used a color printer because you just got grayscale on <laughs> yeah, there. Yeah, the, what should have been highlighted wasn't. Yeah. We're going to take a little break again. This is the bullpen episode of Disclosure. We are talking about the 10 things every man should know. And uh, I was wrong. When we came in, I said we would end up with 40. If you brought 31, I brought 27. I think we're going to end up with like the 100 things that, That's every, right. that every man should know. <laughs> However, as we're going down the list, there's an awful lot of overlap. That's there's right. an awful yeah, lot of right. overlap. So. We're going to take a little break, and we'll be right back after these messages from the good folks at The Voice of Prophecy. Are you searching for answers to life's toughest questions? Like, where is God when we suffer? Can I find real happiness? Does my life really matter to God? Or is there any hope for our chaotic world? The Discover Bible Guides will help you find the answers that you're looking for. Visit us at BibleStudies.com or give us a call at 888-456-7933 for your free Discover Bible Guides. Study online on our secure website or have the free guides mailed right to your home. There is never a cost or obligation. The Discover Bible Guides are our free gift to you. Find answers in guides like A Second Chance at Life. You'll find answers to the things that matter the most to you. Visit BibleStudies.com and begin your journey today to discover answers to life's deepest questions. And we are back from the break. This is, well, if this was a football game, we would have just moved into the fourth quarter. 
if it was a hockey game, we would be uh, that doesn't even work. We'd no, it be doesn't. partway into the <laughs> it would be partway into the third. That wouldn't be a quarter. The third period. Third period. Or we'd be in overtime. We'd be in overtime in the yeah. hockey game. Although those are twenty minute segments. It still doesn't matter. We're in the fourth quarter of Discord. We're talking about the 10 things every man should know, and apparently there's a whole bunch of things every man should know. During the break, you were talking about... We we went after you, Ben, on the cooking thing, because yeah. now we all want you to cook for us, and I asked you, I, where, how'd you learn to cook? I, I shouldn't have said anything. No, because and, you're and going to be doing it so now. So, like, like I was saying, let me say, uh, it was a a job, work ethic, right? Yeah. Um, I needed a job, and my French roommate at the time had a dad who was working as a private chef for a movie studio executive in Los Angeles. Wow. And he needed a dishwasher in the kitchen. Wow. And little did I know, when I get there, it is a front yard the size of a soccer field and (laughs) the most beautiful wood inlaid floors inside. I mean, the craftsmanship of this home was fantastic. And inside, I was washing um, plates and goblets and, and silverware. Plated in gold. I don't think I've ever seen no a way. goblet, an actual goblet. Yeah, well, I guess we shouldn't call them goblets for wine, but the rim was gold too. Mm-hmm. Oh so, wow! Yeah, okay. and it was a fantastic five course French cuisine that I got to sample wow. time and time again. Did getting you paid eat? fantastic at the time. I was getting paid like twenty one dollars an hour. What? Yeah, wow, man. Yeah, what? That's good money. Exactly. Were they good serving work, snails? Good, good pay. Uh, no, we had um, some pate stuff, you know, but there some, might have been snail. Some in it. fantastic it is uh, steak. Uh, <laughs> can I say that on oh, this yeah, show? Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> no, um, but yeah, that's that's basically what kind of sparked and then getting over, you know, to his house and obviously... Uh, so you grew a love for cooking. Yeah, you know you're going yeah. to be cooking for everybody. It's like Ben Torres, well, bullpen chef. <laughs> we can, It's too bad it's radio because you could do a demonstration right here. We just bring in a little sauté oh, pan. we got to do it anyway. Oh. Uh, do it no, anyway. When we get the studio rolled out next door, we can do a cooking. Well, you get yourself a Hummer. We get ourselves our camping gear. We do camping in the woods. Oh, there oh, you go. Wow. <laughs> cooking on a camp. That fire. sounds good. All right, guys. What else? Here, I've got a little while ago we talked about understanding women. I have how to treat a woman mm. down there. Um, and I know that even that's the way I phrase that sounds archaic and sexist, I suppose. But um, here, it's it's Ephesians 5 that I have down here. Love your wives just as Christ loved the church mm-hmm. and gave himself for it. In other words, um, be willing to throw yourself under the bus for the sake of your wife and your family or, or somebody else. And I think about that all the time. You know, we've often said that the men are the privileged class. I don't know. I don't know if men are the privileged class in society because we're expected, at least Christian men are expected, to sacrifice themselves first. You go first. Yeah, so one of my major categories, one of my top ten is know how to defend yourself and or be a protector. Yeah, Mm. it's important. What else you guys got? You know, I I, I picked one out that I thought was quite interesting um, as I was going through some different verses uh, that had men in there. I ran into Genesis 2.18. And, now, and this will be interesting for you, Ben. Oh, uh, as a single guy? Is that what as you're a, saying? As a single guy. But, um, <laughs> we can but, fix this. Yeah. Yeah, we can. We can fix this. Send your resume. I'm not a, saying there's Are you send saying your resume there's a problem? A, no, 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 there's no, 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 there's no problem. No, there's no, no problem. No, no, no. But I can a, fix this for you. But Amanda was in the room send, a minute ago. Send a, <laughs> and, <laughs> send a headshot and a resume to uh, Ben Torres, care of Box 999, Lubbock, Colorado. Let's see what comes in, Ben. Hey, I like that idea. Yeah. All right, so Genesis Genesis 2.18. I'm looking it up. I had to get my glasses on because I'm the old man in the room. Am I the oldest at the table? I can read my Bible. I don't know what uh, I think you are, Sean. Oh. <laughs> okay, Genesis 2. All right. And the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. I, I thought that was that was just interesting. Uh, we... You know, we we think about Paul, and Paul, of course, says, you know, it it it's it would be good if men are like me. And uh, but when when you come back to the to the way that God created it, this is the uh, this is the ideal. This is what God had in store for us. It's just interesting to note that um, that we weren't designed to be be by ourselves. We we were designed to actually have a help a helper. Right. And so I I wrote it down on my list. I, I didn't really think through it much. It was just interesting to find that. Can I respond as a single guy? Absolutely. Yeah, because on my away. list was was to have a dog. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and why do I say this without without even knowing biblically what's <laughs> verse nineteen of what you just said? Yeah. Out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field <laughs> and every bird of the air and brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. 
Uh, so you have God bringing animals first to Adam. So, <laughs> so animals first. So, well, so Ben, you've equated. With, I'm just saying. With, I'm just saying. The, the Lord said, I'm, uh, "Good dogs are a fantastic training." They ground. are. They, That's all I'm saying. I don't have a dog. I have two. Would you like one? No, I want. I uh, have two cats too. You can have those. No, too. no. You, don't need, you don't need cats. No. No. Oh, you don't do cats? No, they just run away. But I dogs don't like are. Cats. I hate cats. Yeah, I don't like dogs cats are an incredibly valuable symbol of being loyal. Yeah. A relationship sure all the Guys way. Guys do yeah. love. Okay, I, around the table. I mean, I th I tend to think that men gravitate more to dogs, women to cats. Is that true? Yes or no? I've seen that. Yeah. Yeah. Generally, I guess I should probably throw that. <laughs> yeah, in. I know. Well, We're that's get a tricky. Trouble. That's a tricky question I'm because to talk because, because probably put another. He, here's the thing. You love cats, don't you? I, 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 he I, loves shopping in cats <laughs> and fabulous outfits. Proverbs, <laughs> Proverbs thirty-one, <laughs> man. <laughs> you can write your complaint letters to Box Nine Nine Nine. Does he Loveland, get four strikes? Colorado. Oh yeah, he's he's so far down there. <laughs> you love cats? I I I do like cats. I don't like owning cats, but I I do like cats. There there's a lot of power wait in, a minute uh, in, in big cats the big cats they're they're oh, just like well we have you, those here in colorado that, that, that guy that uh that, that got attacked and and somehow yeah, they the, the cat yeah. yeah they keep downsizing the cat it was 80 pounds at first and it was small that's a small <laughs> cat <laughs> it was and a it was kitty cat yesterday it was 35 pounds no, oh, they keep bringing oh, it down so here's the reason why i'm interested lynx. in cats and that is this with a dog really they're wanting your attention all the time yeah. And with a cat, I can give my cat some attention. It walks away. And I don't need to worry about it for a while. You know your cat's going to eat you when you die. Oh, sure. Yeah. Fine. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> so is your wife like a cat or a dog, Palmer? Oh. That's Go a, ahead. She's oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Did you just ask him, does she does she like or is she like? Are you trying to say, are you trying to ask me to compare my wife to I'm, pets? I'm, 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 just, I'm just saying. I was, I was just, <laughs> just, just throwing it out there for you. You know what? She would like more attention than my cat <laughs> likes from me. Yes, uh, that's a good I think answer. You're getting a lot of letters. Have you got a? Yeah, show. no, no. Have you got a dog, Ben? I do. Yeah, I do think guys guys need a dog. I I don't have one, and my wife is out there in the control room. I I can't have one. I'm on the road like 200 days a year. Yeah. What do I do with yeah. the dog? But, but I think a lot of girls, especially in this state, have dogs. I don't see a lot of cat owners, at least in the state of Colorado. And that could be birds of prey. <laughs> 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 or because dogs are a lot better to have in the state of Colorado for hiking, I think. Yeah, that's I think true. I think single ladies like dogs to be protectors I think a lot for of them. them. Too. Yeah. So I, I, have, uh, I have one, Sean, that I put into the character category, but I think it's an interesting one that sometimes men forget. Okay. And that is know what your limits are or your weaknesses are. No. No, we can't admit what our weaknesses are. Mm. If you don't this know what some point. of your weaknesses are, you're going to get caught in a bad spot. Okay. Unpack it for me. Well, I mean, I, like I said, I, if you if you don't if you have a challenge in some area or a weakness in some area, I think you if you know that you can buttress yourself. Maybe you can get help. You can work through whatever it happens to be. Um, or, for example, if you're not great at doing a certain task or chore, you're not going to get a job that asks you to do that. So you're gonna you're gonna know what framework you're gonna operate in. Yeah, I do know some of the things I stink at, and I don't. It doesn't bother me at all to ask someone who knows what they're doing sure. to do that for me. And right? I think that's a valuable trait. I think a lot of I think maybe young men don't understand what it means to ask for help or to be humble Why or do to we know what your weaknesses that, are. Why do guys hate asking for help? We feel inadequate. You we think feel so? like we can't take care of it? Mm -hmm. Do you we, guys ask for directions? Sometimes. Everybody got quiet. Depends how lost I am. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like to. I've been lost for three hours. <laughs> yeah, the, thank the Lord for the iPhone. You can quietly Amen. go in a corner and, never and, and find out where you are. You're never lost. <laughs> and never admit. You know they don't sell maps anymore, anymore in gas stations. Are you kidding? I went and I was lost, I should say, in uh, southern Colorado, and I asked for a map because my phone was dead. Oh, no. And they said, they looked at me like, what in the world is a map? I said, really? Yeah. They, they, don't, they didn't have any maps. I used to stop at every state line. And buy the map for that state. Right. And eventually I had them all. I had like all the states in my car door. And as you cross state lines next time, you'd go rifling around for the map. Yeah. They don't sell them. At least this gas station didn't. Huh. It's a big car door, man. Okay, guys, we got map. four hey, minutes how left. About, what else how about got? Courageous? Uh, Ezekiel 2230 talks about. 2230. I'm looking yeah. it up. The Ezekiel. Lord. Ezekiel 2230. I need my old man um, glasses on again. 22. 2230. Okay. Man, you got a tiny. No, no wonder you need glasses. Hey, read that for us if you got it. Twenty-two and wow, that's small print. Thirty, yeah, but look at the margin yeah, space. Great oh, yeah, great margins. Okay, so I sought for a man. This is Ezekiel twenty-two thirty, right? Yeah. So I sought for a man among them who would make a wall 
and stand in the gap before me on behalf of the land that I should not destroy it. But I found no one. Yeah. Ooh, I thought that was that, that rings was, a bell in my powerful. male heart. It does. It, it and and what was interesting to me about that is is he sought for one man, just 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 one man. And mm-hmm. I, I think there's a calling for for a man to to be willing to stand. And even if he stands alone, it doesn't matter what he's mm-hmm. standing against, yeah. but stand alone, and that's what God is going to bless. Yeah. And so I, that was that was just kind of neat to see that. Why do you think that fires up? I think that fires up most guys. As I'm reading that, I'm thinking like I, I was drawn there. I thought, oh, I'll be the guy. I'll go stand in the right, gap. Right. Right. Um, Although when it came right down to it, you know, it'd be like skydiving. Yeah, I'm in. And then the minute you're standing in the door, maybe, oh, what did I sign up for? <laughs> um, well, it probably... Why does that ring a bell for guys? Th- that verse, I don't know, did it ring a bell for the rest of you? Yeah. I Absolutely. think we're called to action as, as guys, you know, genetic. I don't know what you want to call it, instinctively, you know. Yeah. We want to we, be. We want to. We want to run out there. We want. Yeah. We want to run into the burning building. We want to. We, we want to. <clears throat> we want to save. This is what you know. Our, our genes. Our, our our blood is just boiling to to do it. Not and not necessarily for for honor or praise. Just right. because, you know, we we've got this 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 call to action. But but if you look at the story of of David and Goliath, you realize that that most of them weren't weren't standing. And mm-hmm. and it, it's one guy, one guy, an entire army that decides to to stand. Um, and yeah, the David and Goliath story is the rest of them are all chickens, and you got one guy who um, who, who stands up. I uh, I think it rings a bell f- for me. I I always want to be the guy who who runs into the burning building. And one thing that strikes me is often, you know, the news will interview these guys afterwards. You're a hero, and they say, "I'm not a hero. I just did what anybody would do." And I think to yeah. myself, right. Yeah, you know what? On the spot, that's probably true. You don't something in the male brain turns off, and you just go and do it. You, go you solve take the action. Problem. You, you just take action. Problem. Yep. You see a problem, you have to solve it, even if it means risking your life. Have we started to breed that out of men? I think we mm. have. I, I think we possibly. definitely have. No. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but to be courageous to to run into a burning building, whatever it happens to be, it I, I, it is part of our DNA. It's built into us, and of course, you know, it goes back to the Bible, Christ loved the church and gave himself for her. And that's that's a model of what we're supposed to be doing. Yeah, we don't have to be really coaxed as men to give ourselves for a good cause. We we kind of are wired that way, I think. And um, I don't know. I think maybe we are in danger of breeding it out of men, and I th- I'd like to see us encourage it more. I'm we're watching so, the clock run out. So. We're so confused about society today. We're, we're telling men that men aren't men. Um, and and I think I think you're right. We're we're losing what it is to be to, to be a man. I think I had that on my list actually. And here we are out of time. Is like what it means to be a man. Mm-hmm. That's something every man should to know. Be valiant. And I'm not sure that's true anymore. I'm not sure. And here we are at the one minute mark and opening. <laughs> hey guys, why don't I invite everybody back? Let's k- pick it up because what did we hit? Seven out of our potential uh, seventy two. Yeah, I have three left. You've yeah. got three left. Why don't we do another round? You guys in for another round? Yeah, sure. sure I'll All do right. another round. All right. Our topic has been. Ten things that every man should know. We started out by finding out that I don't know how to back up a trailer, and I don't know how to tie a knot. But I would run into the burning building. And I have actually, I think I've actually have you done, done that. Yeah, 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 not a burning building. But I, I did one time without thinking it through, walk in and defuse an armed, uh, an armed and intoxicated male situation. The cops wouldn't go in, so I went in. Mm. And when after I went in, I thought... What, what have I done? <laughs> <laughs> I'll bring up that story the next in the next bullpen. Um, thanks so much, Ben Torres, for dropping by from Mead, Colorado. My pleasure. And you're going to be cooking for all of us? Uh, um, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah no, we're going to get no a frying comment. pan yeah, in the break. I don't know. Palmer Halverson, Alex Rodriguez, I am Sean Boonstra. Thanks for tuning in. All of your complaint letters can be addressed to Ben Torres, Box 999, Loveland, Colorado. I think you're going to get thrown under the bus. You take all the complaints this time around. Willing? I will. Run into that burning building, Ben. All right, till next time, I'm Sean Boonstra. Thanks for joining us.